Well, before we get into looking at more tables, let's look at some notation first. So the phrase, the limit of f of x as x approaches c is l, can be written as follows. Because this is, you know, it's kind of a long thing to write every single time we do this. So the shorthand is this. So the limit is lim of f of x. So there's going to be some function in there and you'll either know what it is or uh, just use function notation. As X approaches C, so down here underneath the LIM, as X and then the approaches is an arrow. So X approaches C, so X arrow C, is turns into equals and the L is L. So when you see this notation, that's what it's saying. The limit of f of x as x approaches c is l. So that's your standard notation. So let's look at some more tables and kind of put stuff together. All right, so we got to complete the table if it's not already done and then evaluate the limit. So this table here is completed because we don't know this one, and chances are this value, if we actually plugged it into the denominator, makes it zero. <clears throat> but I don't wanna know the y value of when x is two. I wanna know what happens as, as x approaches two. So if you look at your function values here, like coming in from this side, what does it look like your function values are getting closer and closer to? Well, I would say 0 0.33 uh, repeating because they keep like adding an extra three. And then on the other side, I would say the same, the same thing. 0 0.33 with a bar because they keep adding in an extra three as well. So both sides are approaching 0.333 repeating. So that is what the limit is gonna equal. And if you don't like that as a decimal, like 0.3333333, you can also say it's a third. All right, part B. Now this one we've left out or I've left out, uh, some x values. So you gotta fill in any x value that's missing. So there's always a pattern to these x's. Um, the furthest out on the left and on the right, they're only off by 0 0.1. So just subtract 0 0.1 and add 0 0.1, that gives you the edges. Um, and that's gonna be the same thing here. If you subtracted 0 0.1 from zero, negative 0 0.1, if you added it, positive 0.1. And then you're gonna work your way down um, and get a little bit closer. So it's like you're off by 0.1, then you're off by 0.01, then you're off by 0 0.001. So since I don't have this one, that's the one where I'm off by 0 0.001. Here, I'm missing this middle one, so that's the one that's off by 0.01. And now you've completed the table. So again, let's look at what the y values or the function values are doing. So on this side, these numbers, they're working their way down and they keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller to zero. And on this side, on the right side, these numbers are working their way down smaller and smaller and smaller to zero. So on both sides, they're approaching zero, so your answer is zero. All right, part C, we left out all of your X's, except for what you're approaching. <clears throat> oh, I should probably say theta and F of theta. So you can work your way, you can get the ends and then work your way in. So you're off by 0.1, oops. 
then you're off by 0 0.01, then you're off by 0 0.001, and same thing on the other side. You're off by 0.1, then off by 0 0.01, then off by 0 0.001. <clears throat> Okay, so as you approached zero from the right, these numbers, they look like they're getting closer and closer to one. And same thing on this side here. There's like 0 0.99, 0 0.99999, 0 0.99999. So they keep adding in some nines and that's gonna work its way closer and closer and closer and closer to one. Okay, so when you are trying to evaluate with the table, either on a quiz or the exam, it's gonna look something like this, like you're filling in uh, boxes for the X values and then you're filling in the limit. Uh, so it'll look just like this. Uh, I'm not gonna have you calculate the function values because you're not gonna have a calculator to use. Uh, so the function values you'll have, but you might be missing some of the X's. Okay, so I'll stop the video and then uh, in the next one we're going to look at limits with a graph.